What's up guys? This is Chris, aka Born on Eleven Nine Seventy. Thanks for checking out this video. One more video before I start my night. Um, this is going to be a quick little video, but I like to put things in perspective to really help people. I try my best. It doesn't always work, but I'm not here to, to try and help the, everybody on the planet. Some people get it, some people don't. I concentrate on the ones that actually want to learn. When it comes to changing your life for the better, we've been programmed all our lives to basically wait for Superman to wait for the next politician to save the day or the next system to help us have a better world or the next best invention that will save the planet only to be disappointed time and time and time again. And we end up getting depressed. We end up getting angry. We end up either being abusive or going towards drugs or alcohol or just straight out depression, which can lead to unfortunate things like suicides and, you know, abuse. Instead of waiting for change, which if you look at just our recent president, what that's what his platform was about change. You know, little did we know he meant how much money you're going to have in your pocket after you pay all your bills and everything, you'll have change. Maybe that's what he meant. But it go, you have to make things change and do the opposite of what they always tell you. Throughout your life, they told you to go in school, follow directions, do what you're told, get a job, put your money in a bank, and watch it lose its value over the years until you go bankrupt or you spend all of your money, on, or currency actually, only buying necessities or living off of credit or even worse, living off welfare. So they teach you to just take it to not have the motivation, to not want to change your destiny, or to believe you don't have the power. And that's where even religions come in, where they tell you to just have faith, believe in what we say, do what you're told, in other words, be a good slave, and you'll be rewarded when you die. It's all about making you waiting for a savior, waiting for a hero, waiting for the next thing around the corner. And if you actually even look at something like the simple thing of Saturday Night Live, where they used to do all the, you know, the fake news reports. Go back to all the way back into the 70s when the, uh, they first started them. They talk about the same things they talk about today. The potential wars and the problems with the economy and how gas is so expensive and food is so expensive. It never changes. And if you look at presidential speeches, go back as far as Nixon if you want. They talk about, well, we need to look into committees for solar energies and other types of fuels and how we're going to run out of gas one day. Remember the gas shortages? If you're old as me, I don't know if I'm old, but I mean, I'm 43 going on 44 in November. I remember back in the 70s when they had the gas crisis. They love to scare people because they want you to be in fear so you're not in control. And I want you to think about how easy it is. All you have to do is say, today is the day I'm making a change. I'm no longer going to sit around and wait for the next best thing or the next best person. I'm not going to wait for somebody else to take care of me. You got to take care of yourself. Because if you put your trust in other people, you can have, run the risk of being disappointed. And just look at how the banks are going right now. Look at the corporations. Look at the governments around the world. Are they bending over backwards to improve your life and make sure the world is a better place? Or are they just helping the few? Or the people that are giving them the most fiat money so they can stay in power? So unless they're really helping us, they're hindering us. And these are the people we want to put our trust in. These are the people that are in charge of what we put in our bodies as far as foods and medications, what they approve that can go in water, what they say you can and cannot do, and what could actually throw you in prison. Like somebody just having cannabis, which is something that they, they love to talk about God and everything, but not when it serves a different purpose. Because, like, for example, God made cannabis. It's a natural plant that grows out of the earth. So if you, if you think about the religious aspect about how they justify God with wars, but they'll throw somebody in jail for having a plant that supposedly God made, it's all about entrapping and enslaving you because they never want you to know your full potential. And just look at, at this as an example because I love to use analogies. Just think of it, if you've ever seen the TV show Gilligan's Island... If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. It was back in the 60s and early 70s. It was a great show. I used to watch it when I was a kid. But the whole premise of that, of that show is 
they're on a three-hour tour. There's a storm. They crash on an island. The boat has a huge gash in it, and they could not leave the island no matter how hard they tried. And I think it went through three seasons, so three years. I don't know how much that means in TV time, but at least they were stuck on that island for at least three years, if not more. I don't know the exact time. But all the time, they couldn't get off the island. Do you know how they ultimately ended up getting off the island? They made a boat. And they floated away. Let me, let me explain that. They were there for three years. Meanwhile, they built huts. They built pedal cars. They built all these different amazing things. But they couldn't build a boat. And then one day, they took down their huts. And they took down some trees that were already there. And they built a boat. And they left the island. What was the difference? Well, the reason they built the boat is because they found out there was some kind of tremor in the island and they discovered that the island was sinking. And eventually, in a couple of weeks, they said, or a couple of days or whatever, they said that the island was going to be completely underwater. So they had no choice. So what was the difference between at that moment when they realized, wow, we got to make a boat, otherwise the island's going to go underwater, we're all going to drown. And what's the difference between that time and the day before when they didn't know about it? The only difference is they went from we can't to we must. Nothing else changed. It's not like all of a sudden some submarine landed and they all jumped on. Or they didn't have all of a sudden a plane drop a whole bunch of new wood that they could make a boat. They created the boat out of the materials they already had, which means they could have done it all along. Just like in The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy had the power to go home all along. She just had to realize the potential of doing it through learning through her experience. But I use that as an example to show that that TV show may seem silly, but if you look at it symbolically, the only difference between them staying on that island for three years or for however long they stayed there till the day they got off that island was their priorities changed. And that was it. Nothing else changed. So what it basically shows you symbolically is when you go from I can't do something, or I hope something happens, or I wish something happens, or I'm going to pray for something to happen. You just make it happen. Like, if you're tired of being unemployed, then make your own business. I mean, it's very easy. You can actually, if you live near the beach, you can go to the beach, get a whole bunch of driftwood, get a whole bunch of shells that are lying on the ground free for you the taking, and make wind chimes or jewelry. If you live in the desert, you can get a whole bunch of different types of rocks like citrines and amethyst and all these different things that can help you have a job. You, If you're an artist, you can create paintings or, or sculptures. There's always something to do. It's whether or not you are motivated enough to do it. And that's one of the things I had to learn. And this life is a learning process. But they want us to be bombarded with fear and war and death and destruction, and poverty, and pain. They want you to be like, oh my god, I'm afraid to leave the house. Or, oh my god, I'm afraid to trust the person next door to me. They want you scared. They want you to not think you have potential. They want you to think, sit down, we'll give you whatever little trinkets we feel necessary, and we'll take care of your life. How can you want to settle for that? And that's why no matter how many times I struggled in my life, and there have been times I've had very high highs where I was making more money than I knew what to do with, and times where I was just getting by. I never wanted a handout. I never I could have easily went down and went to get unemployment or get welfare and food stamps. I don't want a free ride. I want to provide for myself, and that's what I do. And that's why people may laugh at it or whatever. I do the organic products. I do my massage business. I have my DJ business. I have my organ pyramids and stuff. These things that I make that I, I sell because I'm independent. There's always a way. It's how motivated are you? If you're depressed, it's because you choose to be depressed. And please, I believe me, I didn't have, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I mean, my parents got divorced when I was 10. When my mother found another person in her life from the age of 11 till about 25, this man was an abusive alcoholic. I mean, major alcoholic. The type that would hand you cough medicine like NyQuil and tell you to hide it. Well, when you're a kid, you don't know about that, but you know later on in life that when alcoholics can't get alcohol, when they're really that bad... They drink things like NyQuil because it has a lot of alcohol in it. 
I, I had shotguns to my head. I've had a very hard life. It's easy to say, woe is me. It's easy to feel sorry for yourself because no one else is going to care. I mean, how many people will watch this video and judge and hate me? They don't even know me, but they base it on assumption. So we want to have other people in hopes that they'll take care of you and you're happy with that? Now, I can understand if, like, for example, you're a single mother with two kids and you own a house and you're trying to get by and you have no other choice, or you're a handicapped or disabled person where it's going to be more of a challenge to be able to do that. There are always exceptions to every rule. But if you're a person that has the ability to have your mind working in a proper way and has your body working in a proper way, the only thing that you're lacking is motivation. And they want you to feel inferior. Why do you think they put all these shows on that glorify people with a lot of money? Because they want you to think, if you're not one of the beautiful people, or you're not one of the extremely wealthy, then you don't matter. That you don't, you're you less of a person? Last time I checked, if you if, if all these people that supposedly talk about religion, they definitely don't practice what they preach. Because when you're talking about religions, isn't it supposed to be that supposed God or whatever you believe in created man to be equal? I don't remember him saying, okay, he created man, then he created some with more money, which are better. Then he created the elite people, which are his favorite. No, we were all out of one. We were all the same. But yet they will make you feel inferior. They want to beat you down. But it's our choice to say, fine, I'll accept it. Or you could say, no, I don't accept it. If you're laying there and some bully is putting their head on your face and pressing you against the ground, you can sit there and cry all you want. You can sit there and complain all you want, say how unfair it is. Or you can get away from there or change the scenario. If you choose to lay there and be a doormat, you might as well write the word welcome on your forehead. But that's a choice. So if you're watching this and you're like me, because I've been there, I've been depressed. There were times in my life I wanted to commit suicide. So I've been there. Trust me on this. When you have an alcoholic stepfather that puts a shotgun to your head and slams your head through a wall, it's going to put things in real different perspectives. But you can either say, woe is me, or you can become better. Prove people wrong. When somebody says you can't do something... Instead of everybody saying, oh, I guess they're right because everybody's saying I can't do it or I shouldn't do it or no one else has done it. How about instead of saying, agreeing with them, say, you know what? I'll be the first to do it. I'll prove you wrong. And how many people had the purpose of trying to get me off YouTube for whatever purpose, whether they're just mean, idiotic people or people that get paid to do it, it they didn't succeed because I chose to not let them. You can do the same. You just got to build up that fire inside you. And that's why they bombard you with negativity, fluoride in your water, all the electromagnetic fields from cell phone towers, your laptop, your TV, your refrigerator, your microwave, all the depressing shows they put on the media, all the times that they're stealing your money, all the wars that they talk about, and all the terrorists that are right around the corner to get you, and how supposedly with your religions, that you have gods that love you, but if you do one wrong thing, like eat meat on a Friday, you could burn in hell for all eternities. But he loves you. And you don't wonder why some people get so crazy, they want to get a, over-medicate themselves and then take a gun and shoot people? And even with that, if somebody gets themselves so much on medications, which are, by the way, FDA-approved medications, I might add, you never see these gunmen on crack or on some kind of uh, other drug. It's always prescription drugs which are approved by the FDA. So always remember, for every FDA drug that's taken off the shelves because it was proven to be ineffective, at one time they approved as effective and safe. If you want to believe this stuff is all coincidence, that's perfectly fine. That is absolutely your right. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm telling you my story. If you want to feel that it resonates with you, then that's good for you. If it feel that it doesn't resonate with you, well, that's good for you. But don't kill the messenger. Because all I'm doing is trying to help people. And if that angers you, then that's not my problem. That's your problem. And if you're one of those people that before you watch this video, you were very depressed... And all of a sudden you clicked on this video and it answered what you needed to hear, then take that as a message. Take that as a sign. Take that as you're traveling your path 
And there's different things that you'll see along your path, but it's taking you in the direction you need to go. So there are no coincidences. It was something you were meant to hear. Now do something. Create something. Be something. Stop waiting for Superman. Stop waiting for the next president to come save us. Stop waiting for the banks to come up with a solution. Do one yourself and stop living in fear. Because there will always be people who will hate anyone that tries to ruin their good time. Even if it ends up ultimately helping the world in the long run. And that's why there's no coincidence that all the heroes in our day, all the wise people, the Galileos, the JFKs, the Abraham Lincolns, the Gandhis, the Martin Luther, the Kings, the uh, Malcolm X's, the uh, John Lennon's of the world, they all got murdered because they all spoke about truth and unity and peace and oneness. You kill the messenger, you stop the message. Those were different times. Now, thanks to the internet, we can have information instantly. There could be a person right now watching this from China and Australia and Uganda. I have several, almost 137 countries, I believe, watch my channel. 100 years ago, you couldn't do that. 50 years ago, you couldn't really do that. We got to take advantage of these times because times, they are a changing. And you got to do what it takes to change with it. And no one is going to sit there and pick you up if you fall down. And it's like that song, I get knocked down, I get up again. If you choose to stay down, that's your fault. Take responsibility. And that's another thing they try and make it seem like. It's always somebody else's fault. Like, oh, that person beats his kids because his father used to beat him. Or that girl dates all abusive people because she was abused as a child. And they always make you point, oh, it's not your fault. It's okay. It's somebody else's fault. No. Take responsibility for yourself. And if, even if somebody does something wrong to you, do what you can to make it better. Do you know what they say? Like they say, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. No, when life gives you lemons, make a lemon and squirt it back in the guy's eye. Take back control of your life. Or stop complaining. Peace.